Part 16. Sweet 16. <laughs> this will be one of the best ones, too. So, I'm Joseph Caldwell. Tyler Harris. And we are the original Sales Wolves. Ow! 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 All right, so Sales Wolves Podcast, two fold task. You want to share the two fold task? I would love to. Nothing would please me more. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yes. So, task is twofold. First task is to show appreciation and support for um, what is often a underappreciated, uh, overlooked, um, but integral, critical, vital um, part of not only an organization but society as a whole, uh, which is the salesperson, yep. uh, which ultimately does make the world go round. Because yep. nothing would be bought, shipped, consumed, made. Yep. Anything until it's no first sold. So, it's sold. Uh, so we want to show just general uh, appreciation and support um, because also we know how difficult uh, of a profession it is and how um, you go through seasons in a sales career where you'll be you know riding the high mm-hmm. of a, a momentum streak that you cannot be stopped and then there's times where you couldn't pay someone to to take your product yep. uh, off of off of your hands, and we know how hard that is, and we've all been there. Oh, yeah. uh, so we just want to provide support and appreciation during all seasons of a salesperson's uh, career. Uh, and then the, the second is to actually provide some things that you can actually take, uh, put in use, uh, whether it be more of your personal life type stuff, development, uh, personal development, or actual specific training uh, tips or little things that you may pick up along the way that you can use um, throughout a, a sales process, but just use in life in general. Yep. So in today's podcast, man, the title is The Voice Within. Um, so what are you what are you saying to yourself is what we're getting at. And here's the thing, some people like I've heard some people go, I don't I don't really have an internal dialogue. That person is really never going to make it because right. if you're not self aware enough to know that you're talking to yourself all day long, there's internal dialogue going on. Um, if you're not self aware enough to know that, then you'll never be self aware enough to pay attention to what it's saying. And to know that predominantly it's probably negative. Yeah. And uh, and so anyway, because we're, it's impossible. We're talk about that. Because it's impossible. Everyone everyone is very aware that there is an internal dialogue, but that person uh, is running from that internal dialogue. Right. And so yeah. there's 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 a whole lot more going on there because they know it. They're just hiding from it or running from it or. I run from your external dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> so funny so anyways Uh, so the voice within um you want to talk you want to you want to start with the five second rule Uh, yeah 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 that's this is good it's so funny we just came to this realization today of where the actual five second rule for like you know you drop a you know chip on the ground you're like Blow it off and like five, five second, second rule. Five second rule. Yeah, no jerks no jer- can get on. My kids five are seconds. more like the five day rule. <laughs> they drop something. <laughs> Just eat it. <laughs> this French fries only been in this back seat for five days. <laughs> when do we go to McDonald's again? <laughs> yeah. Tuesday, we're good. Hey, and those things never go bad. I mean, <laughs> They never rot. It's not real food. But so, so we were doing a little research, and there's this guy, Mel Robbins. Um, who's really coined this this phrase and has written a lot of really good stuff um, mm-hmm. on the topic of the five second rule. Uh, and, and what it all boils down to is that your brain is hardwired to protect you, to keep you safe, to keep you away from danger, and anything that would Just be- self-preservation. Self-preservation. You were talking to um, Dr. Heiss about that mm-hmm. that came in here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was. A biologist that we were talking to. Yeah. We're actually gonna have her on the show. Yeah, we are. Um, probably in the next couple episodes. Yeah. So. And she, and her main focus is on blind spots, yeah. which has a lot to do with what we're gonna talk about today. And a and lot biology. of what we talk about a lot with self-awareness um, and, and being able to develop 
um, a heightened level of self-awareness. Yep. Um, but but with that five second rule, we we have these. Um, so when your your brain is used to doing certain things, you can, you have this. Over, over time, the repetitive nature of practicing something over and over, things that become habits. And there's actual like, I think they call them channels in your brain, mm -hmm. uh, where over time going from that synapse to that synapse or whatever you call that. Um, it, it's where they got the term rut from. You're in a rut. Huh. Maybe not, but it sounds good, right? It sounded great. Yeah. Oh, a rut. Just down that channel. Just down that channel. <laughs> But things become so easy to fall back into it because you've done it so many times. And so making that decision to do something different, uh, in essence, is out of your comfort zone. Yep. It's stretching you. And your brain, they're saying, takes about five seconds to go right back into that fight or flight, that protection, that self-preservation, that safety. Because it knows secure. that rut. It knows that channel safe yep. for Tyler. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. and its goal is to keep you alive and safe. This is this is prehistoric shit here. So, <laughs> so in that the the danger is uncertainty. Right. It's not a literal danger, but your brain your sees brain uncertainty as though I can't control that because I don't know what happens when this happens. I do know what happens when this happens, though. So within five seconds, it's taking you right back there. Yeah. So it's because it could it, get eaten by a dinosaur and you're dead. Yeah. In the channel. In the channel. In the out of the rut. channel. In the rut. Dinosaurs. <laughs> sharks and dinosaurs. <laughs> they exist outside the channel. <laughs> this the uh, shark, Sharknado. That, that maybe, awesome. I think there's been a couple of them now. I don't know where this came from. But, so I've you get five seconds them. to make that decision to do, to act on, to, um, to decide, or your brain is going to take you right back to that same place. And convince you to abandon that idea. And it's so, so much harder, right? So the level of awareness that you have to have to not only identify those, like we called them in the last podcast, defining moments, not only identifying, but to be able to identify and then act within five, five seconds. seconds. Um, so, so when you think about the five second rule of, of dropping some food on the ground or whatever it is, and then putting it in your mouth and saying, oh, well, this is a five second rule. It's all, it, it almost, it makes sense because it's, before my brain has time to realize and rationalize that this is probably not good for me to eat off the floor, I'm going to throw it in my mouth real quick and chew it, it, in, five, it. in five seconds so that I can't choose not to do it when I do want to. Um, that kind of makes sense. Uh, it does. But, yeah. Perfect sense. But, in, but applicable to our everyday lives, it's, it's the key uh, to mm -hmm. developing those disciplines and those habits and yep. to, to pushing yourself to, to the next level, which is very interesting. And for overcoming that voice within. Right, the exactly. negative side of that voice within. Before you develop a voice that is so positive, that is so that is so that's a cheerleader, right? Mm -hmm. Before you develop that, it's almost always it's always gonna be negative, right? That's just that's how we're hardwired. We're hardwired to protect us. So no don't don't shouldn't, can't, won't, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Those yeah. are all those are all things. and we hear, we hear no. Um, I can't remember. It was like 144,000 times more than yes by the time you're five years old or something. Hmm. I mean, it's something crazy. Don't sense. quote me on that because I, I can't remember the statistic, but I heard that one time. Yeah. I'm like, what? Oh my gosh. And I was like, well, not my kids. When I have kids, I'm going to just tell them yes all the time so they grow up positive. <laughs> yeah, that crap did not last long. <laughs> right? Um, but uh, how do you handle your negative thoughts? How do you handle your negative thoughts? You reprogram them. You repro your pro it, you've been you've downloaded these programs through repetition through the way that we through no fault of your own on some of the some of the things by the time you're seven um, most of your programming has taken place and we yeah. get our programming from adults and our surroundings and our circumstances right that that doesn't mean you're not responsible okay because you can change those mm -hmm. that's through you can change things through habit right. But the first thing you need to do is, is you need to understand what you're thinking and how it affects you. You need to understand what negative things. And I, I was watching a thing by Grant Cardone, of all people. I like him, by the way. He's, yeah. he's sharp. Um, I watch a lot of his stuff. But uh, Grant Cardone was talking about it, about when he, when he started watching what he was thinking, he actually started writing it down. Hmm. He started jotting down all the negative things, just like he was a bystander. Yeah. Like, like just observing. Like 
Um, and this is one thing he said. He, he, he had a hard time with relationships before he was married to his current wife here. He, he said that when he would think about women, he would think women always cheats on a man. The woman always cheats on the man. The, 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 I'll never have a happy relationship. Hmm. Um, she'll always choose somebody over me, or just different stuff like that. Yeah. And he, so he observed himself thinking these things, and he would hmm. he jot them down. And then, um, and they were all around time. I don't have enough time. You know the people that say they don't have enough time. They don't, hmm. right? And they have the same twenty four hours you have. Same twenty four hours I have. Everybody's got the same twenty four hours. So that excuse, I mean, you need to realize that how did, how did Obama become president? He had the same 24 hours in a day, mm -hmm. but you, I can't, you know, get do up laundry. and do laundry. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. I don't do laundry. <laughs> um, but uh, um, you got to understand what you're saying to yourself, right? Yeah. So the can't, the shouldn't, the won't, the couldn't, I'm broke, There's, it's too expensive. All these negative things that you're saying, jot these things down and observe. That's what you're saying, and it's and you're coaching yourself into that. You're creating the habit. And and the reality is, you're never going to stop the negative thoughts from entering your brain. It's it's a conscious effort to not allow them to, I guess, not bear fruit, but like not to allow them to stay there. Like right. they're going to come in. You just have to be be able to make the decision to to let it come in and let it float right back out and not not hold on to it because um, they're all it's always going to be negative thoughts and and you know there's a whole like religious aspect to this that would say that the enemy that that's how the enemy the enemy it being the devil the enemy doesn't you know people think that the 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 greatest way of the enemy is temptation but it's not it's self-doubt it's mm -hmm. anxiety it's it's these things that are those thoughts in our head that keep us from doing what what we ultimately could do by distracting us uh, with all of these thoughts and those thoughts will always be there yep. uh, but it's it's learning not to pay any attention to them or it's learning also to equip yourself with different types of affirmations sure. um, ways to just remind yourself uh, remind yourself of situations uh, that you've been in in your life and you did do the right thing and this is what was a result of it. Different affirmations of just telling yourself um, you know, different positive things that would counter any type of negative stuff that's coming in because unless you can ignore it and then reaffirm yourself that that's not you, um, that just because you did that, a lot of times it'll be stuff that you did you know, that, that'll get brought up and, and haunt you for years and years and years and you think, oh, well, I did that. That's just who I am. That's right. who I'll always be. But to be able to move past that and to start giving yourself affirmations of, of things that you've done that were positive. That's that, right. That that's not who you're always going to be. That's just something that happened a long time ago. And that's there's a lot of uh, power to that and it's a difficult process um, to really master other than just making daily making a conscious daily attempt at identifying those yep. uh, those times. And you'll start to notice it in other people too. Like as soon as I started being really super aware of the thoughts that were entering my head, I started being overly aware of the just negative connotation I would hear in other people's oh, yeah. um, tone and the things Absolutely. that they would constantly talk about. And I would find myself correcting people like, why are you being so negative? Like, why, like, why is all we ever talk about? Like the negative parts of like what people aren't doing and what, you know, like different yeah. stuff. It's like, why don't we talk about the positive, the optimistic side of, uh, of, of things. And I've just come to a point in my life where I just flee from negativity. Like if people are just negative all the time, I just I wondered why we don't hang out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> which, which am I and which are you? Which, <laughs> which group By do the I fall in? or the flee? <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. But, I mean, but, the, but the thing is to change the message. Yeah. Change the message. Retrain the brain. Retrain. Um, and, and I put in, we talked about this in the last podcast on the biology of belief. And uh, this is actually scientific, awesome, studied. You, uh, th 
I, and actually, uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, I watched a podcast with Dr. Bruce Lipton on it, and he was talking about the biology of belief and the subconscious and the conscious mind and how that works and how the subconscious mind's in control of what you do 95% of the day. The conscious mind is in control 5%. For example, I'm driving down the road. I'm thinking about what I'm going to say on this podcast with mm -hmm. you. Who's driving the car? Subconscious. Subconscious is driving the car, right? You've trained that program through repetition. Mm -hmm. through how many years? I've been driving for 25 years, yeah. 26 years. I actually started driving when I was 12, so mm -hmm. I've been driving for like 30 years <laughs> this year. I'll be 42. I know I am a handsome 42. What? What's 42 year old doing? <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Bro. 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 <laughs> but, uh, but Dr. Bruce Lipton goes into how, how do we retrain that subconscious, that programming, right? Because um, we all know people that when they're doing stuff, we're like, they got to know that, that they're just sabotaging this, 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 and this. No, they don't know. Because when they go to think about it, it's different for them because yeah. that's the 5% of the time they're actually willfully in control there in their conscious mind. But when they go to think about something else, the subconscious takes over and they're offending more. You, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? They're doing the yeah. stupid things that, that cripple them in success, that yeah. cripple them in relationships. Um, it's, it's insane, right? So anyway, that's... That's a good one. If you want to, if you want to study some of that biology of belief with Dr. Lipton, he he um, he gives so many practical ways of retraining your mind. And one of them is through repetition. One of them is through, you know, when you're falling asleep and your brain's in the theta waves, um, which is where you try, where the sub. Is that it wasn't the fraternity you were in in college? That's not <laughs> Phi Beta Sigma. You're funny. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> I love the way that theta waves. I love the way that theta waves. That's hilarious. Uh, so, but anyway, that's that's uh, that's a good thing to study is how to retrain that. How to retrain the like you were talking about the grooves in your mind, mm -hmm. the the channels, the the thought processes you fall back on that control your decision making and what you do, right? And one of the most probably practical examples I can give on this is. So the voice within, for me, that voice within is is in what I'm trying to attack right now in, in, in our pursuit of, of the uncomfortable and putting ourselves in uncomfortable situations and stretching ourselves and really f figuring out what we're capable of. That voice within for me is like this constant, like there'll be times where I'm in certain situations and I'll start to consciously think of, okay, what can I do now that I would have normally been like, nervous or awkward to do or like embarrassed to do like right, especially right. public stuff and that quite frankly is a lot of the stuff that i put on social media um a lot of the facebook lives and the different things that it's this live broadcast to where whatever comes out of your mouth whoever's on the other end is receiving that and they yeah, can do yeah. with it whatever they want um there's a there's a huge um element of anxiety <laughs> that is attached to sure. those type of of things, uh, but it was by doing it over and over Gosh. and over 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 that now it's just like, hey, I'm gonna do a Facebook Live and just pop it up and three, two, one, you're live and I'm like, oh, hey, what's up, Facebook Live? Where before I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta have, I gotta have notes. I used to have a, I, I literally used to have a dry erase board. Um, it was about the size of a of a piece of paper uh, in my car that I would be driving down the road. And my, as soon as my wife watches this, she's gonna kill me. Uh, but I'd be driving down the road, writing out notes on what I wanted to talk about on the next Facebook Live that I was going to do in a few minutes because I wanted to make sure that I had it so I didn't get lost and I didn't like, get to where I was just like, uh, 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 uh and, not, and just completely lose track of where I was going. I would literally make notes while I'm driving and then I would put up the Facebook Live and I would like prop it up like in my center console and be like, so uh, the next topic is, um, and we just go right into it. You hit a now, bump and it goes down and you're like, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I know, I need more points. <laughs> Oh, it's only been two minutes, <laughs> uh, but but it is. It's it's um, it's just 
having the uh, the will or the willingness to attack those things, right? Yep. Uh, and just, there's been times, I don't know why this one is like a reoccurring thing for me, and I'm probably gonna get this on Facebook Live one day. I'm not ready to do it yet. But for whatever reason, I do a lot of like just slow cardio uh, on the, at the gym, like before and after my workouts. And a lot of things you do are slow. <laughs> <laughs> just in general, slow but effective. Um, <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> but there's been like this net, like literally every, almost every time I, I get on the treadmill, I think to myself, like I should just start screaming out something just absolutely crazy and record it on video, just like to create that tension, tension of like of uncomfortable. that, like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Like something that you would normally see like on a movie or like on TV, oh, yeah. like wanting to like wanting to create it. I like it is like a palpable like urge that I have when I'm on the treadmill every time. It's the weirdest thing. Like I'm literally like, I know what you need I to need do. to put on Facebook Live and I need to go stand in front of everybody and then just get them to do something. Like just go scream and like just freak people out. Yeah, you need to bank. do the Robin Bank one. Yeah, I mean, but, but literally like, it's just this weird and I haven't, and I haven't succumbed to it yet. Like I haven't, I haven't done it yet, but I will. I'm gonna do it. Let's do it here. Put it here. I'm not gonna do it here. Do it, like get the down. I'm not, I'm not I gotta Rob talk later. <laughs> I gotta talk. <laughs> I need my voice. Oh man! And right, for those else, of you that man? are watching this and are a little bit concerned about the things we do in our spare time, we're not actually talking about robbing a bank. We're oh it no! Is a, uh, yeah. it, is a, it is a little bit. It is a uh, what would you call it? It is a. Um, it's a, uh, it's an, it's an, a uh, practice, not a practice, but a, uh, trying to get people to, to unleash the, <laughs> unleash the demon within, like, I don't know, demon. So, so we were at a training one time, a sales yes. training and, yes. uh, and also just out of the blue, out of the blue, Joseph comes from behind this desk and just pretends like he's robbing a bank. So he's got a gun. He's like, get the down. And, and it, like, there were like four or five people just having an absolute heart attack. Like, to like, <laughs> like, I mean, I'm talking about the like so loud that it was shaking the very walls mm. in the room that we were in and just freaking everybody out. And so this last training we had, we actually had the people that were there, uh, the four training. We had them each do it, and it was hilarious. We had yeah. one guy. Pretty much break a table yep. when he jumped up on it. Brand new table. Another guy, what did he like slam something? Slammed like a sword that of course we just had laying around randomly. We have swords like, and weapons laying around <laughs> everywhere. Slammed a sword into the desk. That's true. But then remember uh, we had one guy and he was I think it was the first one, so yeah, yeah I mean I give him a cut him a little bit of a break, but he just he stood up and he was like, Hey uh get down, I'm robbing this joint. <laughs> I'm gonna rob this joint. <laughs> It was like something out of like a movie from like the, <laughs> like the four. <laughs> it's like, yeah. hey, hey. And we'll probably talk about this example when we talk about passion. Yeah. We do a podcast on passion and finding your passion. And that's what we were talking about in the training is be, be passionate. People connect with passion. But, um, but yeah, if you can't. Yeah, it's yeah. So, what about this unpublished song? Go on to that. Let's talk about. So, that. I mean, it's and we'll kind of close with with this. There's something that Gary Vee's been talking about a lot lately, and I, I listen and consume so much of the stuff that he puts out that um, I wanted to, to bring it up. And he, and he talks about the self doubt that people have, uh, maybe the over criticism, yep. um, or over being over critical of, of your own work, of your own mm -hmm. um, thoughts and things that you want to put out there into the world. And, he, and he's been meeting with tons of musicians lately, a lot of different artists. Um, That's because he has a new, uh, what's his new sports and music label? Well, he's got the sports, yeah, with Vayner Sports, with Vayner Talent. I Vayner mean, Talent. Yeah, yeah they're kind of yeah. doing some different things. But with, um, but with meeting with these musicians, what he keeps telling them about is, you know, now it's like this quantity versus quality, that the quality's there. Like it's, you know, it's, it's the quality is now in their head and, and them being overcritical of not, it, not being up to their standards of what needs to, to go out there. But he's just like, if you could put out a song every single day, you need to do that. And he talks about these artists like, you know, Prince or Queen or Michael Jackson, these, these artists that, you know, later after their death, uh, that these songs that they find in these notebooks and these things that could have been the biggest hit that they ever had that never saw the light of day, yep. ever. 
um, and he's talking to these individual artists and he's like in these individual musicians and he's like he's like you have seven top ten hits right now crinkled up and in your trash can or you know on a napkin that's in your desk or that's in a file that will never ever see the light again he's like you've got seven top ten hits that's amazing but the fact that you're not putting it out there and just it's just the general landscape of the the industry now and the ability to put stuff out there and have people react to it um, is is it's crazy and what keeps them from putting it out there the self-doubt the voice um, the voice within yeah it's not thinking that it's good enough not thinking that they're good enough not thinking that it's ready um but just to be able to flood the market uh with content uh that whole content over qu- of or content over or, sorry quantity over quality um it really has to do with the voice within uh telling you that well what does some, somebody see you know notices when i messed up in that first quote yeah. uh, who cares just put it out there put it out you there don't need anybody's permission Man, I'm excited about our next episode. Our next episode is very near and dear to both of us. Um, it's our salute to freedom. It's our salute to freedom and those who have who have paid the price for us to have it. And um, what that means to have it. What it means to take advantage of it. Um, and what it means to squander it. What what that looks like. Sure. Um, but uh, but that's that's our next podcast, man. I appreciate everybody being on this. Um, we uh, we love doing it. If it helped you, then help us. Yeah. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. <laughs> <laughs> so I am Joseph Caldwell. This is Tyler Harris, and we are the original sales wolves. Ah, that sounds that sounds weird. <laughs>